Okay, Captain Larry, and what we're looking at is uh, a gas valve from a small stove. Uh, for some reason that I can't understand, there's uh, really nothing uh, on YouTube uh, where anybody disassembles one of these little barrel type uh, gas valves. So I'm going to do it here for you. There's not much to them. Uh, just to show you, um, if you've got an antique stove, you probably have um, a gas manifold like this, which is just a piece of pipe with um, valves that, that screw into it with a pipe thread. And uh, then there's an adjusting stem on one end where the knob goes. And there's an orifice on the other end then your burner slides over this thing. And here we've got here, let me show you, we've got one taken apart. Uh, this is just the part that uh, screws into the manifold. And usually it's one piece, this happens to be two. And this is the orifice. And this is the important thing, because this is a calibrated hole. This has a specific size. Um, Depending on whether you have natural gas or propane, this is a specific size and everything to do with your mixture has to do with this little hole. And if that hole becomes clogged, your burner isn't going to work right and that was the problem we had here. Now, the question is, how do you clean this? Well, there's a very good question. Um, you got to clean it mechanically. Now here's a piece of wire. This is just some kind of wire that I had kicking around. And it's bigger than the orifice hole. Now can you just take any old darn thing and jam it in that hole to clean it? Uh-uh. Because what you're going to do is change the size of the orifice. It's going to change your fuel air mixture and then your burner is not going to burn correctly. So the other thing we're going to do here, I don't have a tripod, so I'm going to just, uh, well, I'll show you what I'm going to do and then I'm going to do it because I'm going to have to set the camera down. Um, these things have little tiny screws. There's one. Hello. Little tiny screw right there. And that holds the barrel of the burner in. The burner, the uh, the valve is tapered. It's got little slots in it, and it's tapered. And the end of the uh, the knob shaft has a spring that keeps the coned um, valve seated. So let me take one apart here. This one, that happens to be the one I'm working on, has had its little tiny screw replaced with a hardware store screw, probably a number four. So let me set the camera down here and uh, take this apart. Maybe you can see what I'm doing and maybe you can't. Um, you can use a more conventional screwdriver on this one because it's got a it's the hardware store screw, but the other ones with the little tiny um, headless screw require a small screwdriver like this. I could just do that with my finger. Did you hear that snap? Now, if you don't have this pointed down, this thing's going to shoot across the room because look at that. There's a spring inside. Now I'm going to take my needle nose pliers and pull the tapered valve out of there. Okay, here we go. This thing has got a taper, which you can obviously see, and you can also see that it's scored. Not badly. You can almost hear me run my fingernail over it. So it is scored. So what I'm going to do is take some very fine emery cloth and polish that. And I'm going to try to get in here in the bore of this thing and polish it gently too. And then clean it all very well so there's no grit and crud left in there. And then I'm going to lubricate it slightly. I'll take a little molly grease or some kind of grease that'll take high temperature and just put a little film of it on there so that it will turn freely. So, 
you, if you look at this thing closely, you can see that it's got a hole in it. And it's got another little hole. It seems to be filled up with solder. I'm going to take another one apart and look at it because this burner's not working properly and see what's going on. When this is put together in the stove, the spring end, let me set this down, <coughs> spring end fits inside of here. And there's, there's the thread for the screw. That goes in the slot. Little screw goes in there like that. I imagine you probably can't see a damn thing right now. Anyway. <coughs> there you can see the slot, the screw, and the spring, and the taper. And they all push together like that and go inside this, this valve body, which has got a taper, and also um, a slot in there to regulate the gas flow. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn this off and, um, and maybe I'll just leave it like this. I'm going to take apart another valve. This valve is working properly. doesn't appear to have been dicked with. I'm going to take its little tiny screw out. I'm going to put my finger on the end of the stem because I know if I don't, the stem will go flying. And this little tiny screw with no head on it will get lost. There it is. There's the stem. The spring stayed in. There's the spring. And I got a feeling that that burner that's not working right has its spring replaced. Okay. Now, let's look at this. This is interesting. Here on the right is the burner that's working properly. And you can see, maybe, that it's got a nice, smooth surface on the uh, thing. And the gas holes are clear, but it's not all scored up. And here's the one that doesn't work properly, and it's all scored up. Let's take a look inside here, see what we can see. To get some more light on it, I don't know if we're going to be able to see in there or not. I want to take a look myself, see what I can see, if the camera doesn't. What I see is a bore that's nice and bright and shiny and not scored up. So, and the one that doesn't work, see if we can see in there. I can see scoring in there. I don't know why this thing is... Uh, make an interference, but there's scoring on the bore of the one that doesn't work well and no scoring on the one of the one who does work well. Let's take a look at these springs for comparison and see. Here's a spring that came out of the good one and its valve and its stem. And here's the spring of the one that isn't working well, and I can't even get the spring out. There it is. And it is clearly a different spring. Voila. Take a look at this. Here's our problem. Somebody's replaced the spring in the burner that doesn't work. See how many turns there are on, this, on the correct spring? There's about five or six. And look at how many spring turns there are in the in this replacement spring. There's about twice as many. So this is a fairly easy spring to squish. And this one, I don't know, I can't tell with my fingers, but it feels stiffer. So I got a feeling that there is the root of our problem. Um, and what to do about it. I uh, don't know. Uh, I'm going to just polish up the uh, polish up the uh, uh, the valve taper here. Uh, polish up the uh, barrel of the valve. Uh, lubricate it slightly. Put it back together, and see if it will work. Unfortunately, I can't do this on the stove. I can swap the burners uh, rapidly on the stove. 
but I have to take the whole manifold out of the stove in order to get to these valves because of this little heat shield nergus here and the way the stove is constructed. So, uh, there we go. I may go looking at springs as well, but maybe if this thing is, uh, is smooth and greased, uh, we can get along with more spring tension. Okay, so anyway, there is an overview of what goes into a, uh, a gas range uh, valve of this type. Uh, a lot of the more modern stores have a little plate with a couple of screws that hold the hold the uh, the gas valve together. But I think when you get it inside them, you're still going to find this this taper uh, kind of arrangement with a spring.